So my name is Brian Neff and I'm the Associate Dean of Research in the Faculty of Science and I have the pleasure of introducing our next six speakers who are all uh, researchers and professors here at the uh, university and were selected among our distinguished researchers to highlight some of the activity in big data, big data synergy that's going on at Western and this includes aspects of data analytics, aspects of next generation infrastructure and technologies as well as uh, uh, important issues of social agency and, uh, and social impact. And so we're going to start with uh, Charles Ling, who is a professor in um, the Department of Computer Science, and he's going to present a little bit on his uh, research, his data analytic research, and his award-winning glucose guide application, which is helping uh, patients to monitor their glucose levels um, and help facilitate care on diabetes. Sure. Charles. Thank you, Brian. Um, well, one word that the last speaker came up um, often is value, like how the big data can have value, can bring out the value. So in this talk, I want to give a specific application of data and data analytics and how it can bring values to people, improve people's lives. So first I want to acknowledge my collaborators, including Dr. Petrilla and our students in this research. So uh, this work is about diabetes. I want to give two slides, a layman introduction of diabetes. So here is a normal person's blood glucose throughout the day. So here, for example, is breakfast time, one hour after, two hour after, lunch, one hour, two hour after, dinner, and then you sleep. For a normal person, your blood glucose will look like this throughout the day. It does go up and down, but whenever you eat food, then the carbohydrate and other things in the food will be converted into glucose or sugar and get into your bloodstream, and then your blood glucose will go up. But then when it goes up, then another mechanism will work. Your pancreas will secrete insulin, which will then signal your cells, all the cells in your body, to take the glucose as an energy. That's why your glucose will drop. Okay. And your blood glucose level should be kept into these two lines. Occasional peaking over is okay, but long time is not good. Keeping your glucose in a stable level is very important for your whole body for your brain, and for everything. So that's about normal person. How about diabetes patient? Well, their blood glucose might look like this throughout the day. Very high, as soon as they eat something. Okay. And this, because two possibilities. One is there's no insulin, and that's called type 1 diabetes. The second type is that called type 2, which diabetes patients have reduced insulin or their cells are not sensitive to the insulin. That's why your blood glucose goes very high. Okay. Now, when the blood glucose goes over 10 or higher, it will cause problems. So, well, it's actually it's a silent and slow killer. Why is it silent? Because you wouldn't know, except that you might feel thirsty occasionally. Otherwise, you have no symptom. So it's silent. Why it's slow? Well, because you don't know that, so over the time, months, and years, things to happen, and then it's too late. Well, whenever your blood glucose is high, you will damage your you know, nerves, engines, you will block your veins and artery, and the glucose can also come into a fat store on your belly and hip, and it will lead to a lot of complications years later, such as high blood pressure, stroke, etc., etc. Okay. I have some gruesome pictures, so if you, uh, if you have weak heart, look away. <laughs> so for example, amputation and blindness, etc. These are all complications of diabetes. Okay, so diabetes in the world, of course, you all know it's epidemic. In the worldwide, there are 380 million people have diabetes. It's increasing. In Canada, there are 9 million people are diabetic or pre-diabetic. And it's one about four. Everyone, not just adults. So I see there are about 80 people here. So that means there are about 20 people here that should have diabetes or pre -diabetes. And some of you do not know that. Yet. And it's slowly and silently affecting you. And among these, 90 to 95% are type 2 diabetes. And this has been shown to be strongly linked to poor lifestyle. Well, what if you have the have diagnosed as type 2 diabetes? Well, usually you see doctors, of course, and doctors prescribe you pills and medicines. And then, of course, then you also see dietitian, education, go to the education center to talk about lifestyle change. 
and then they will give you some guidelines to manage. And you know, the guidelines are quite complicated. This is, for example, the CBA uh, website. They talk about all different kinds of food, types of food, and for each type, you also need to look inside to see how many carbohydrates, how much protein, and how much fat each will have. And your each meal needs to be balanced in terms of how much you can take. And not only that, you also have a you know, combination of food. You have a plate of a variety of things. How will you do that? So therefore, it's actually a very complicated process. And also, those guidelines are not personalized. They're just generic to everyone. So therefore, and, and, and throughout the day then, there's very little support in weeks and months that a patient just left by themselves to manage their diabetes. And usually then, type 2 diabetes get worse, they will take more pills, they will start using insulin and more and more insulin, and affect again their life. Okay? On average, their lifespan will be shortened by 5 to or up to 10 years. So, how can the data analytics could help in this case? Well, you know, smartphone and tablets revolutionize our life, I don't need to say that. And there have already been many apps that could be used to do things to help out. However, most of them, almost all of them, will just record, keep track of, and show your blood glucose, your meal diet, etc. Okay. There are two most, well, most, pop, mo most famous companies in the US. One's called GlucoGuide, or one's, sorry, one's called Gluco. Gluco is our stuff. <laughs> one's called Gluco. Gluco um, put a lot of effort in terms of connecting um, all these devices into cell phones, so you can get your numbers easily into the cell phone. Another company called WellDoc, um, they, they build a website to allow patients and doctors to talk to each other, so that a doctor can, over the web, change medicine, etc. And it seems that none of them actually use data analytics to help that with this patient. And this is our work called GlucoGuide. GlucoGuide is data-driven, it's personalized, and it makes personalized recommendation on lifestyle changes. And data analytics is my research for many, many years, for more than 10 years. But this research is driven by what I call killer applications, because this is a high impactful work that can improve people's life. So how the glu how glucose works, very briefly. Well, again, a patient will use his smart her smartphone to input the daily lifestyle data. And then the data will be transmitted securely into our server or the cloud. And then we'll apply data mining algorithm, data analytic algorithm to, to analyze which factor is most strongly related or associated to the high blood glucose level of that person. And then such recommendations after you know, a few days of data you know, collection and analysis, then might be viewed by Dr. Pachola or his, or his team to make sure it's, these recommendations are valid. And then recognition then will be sent to the patient's cell phone. For example, here's an example. It said, after mining your data, aerobic walk has the largest impact to lower your fasting blood sugar. Have an aerobic walk today. Set up a reminder. Okay? And if the patient does walk, which then the patient will carry the phone or, you know, that we will know actually, we will send maybe in the next few days, great job in taking the, the aerobic walk which has lowered your average blood sugar. Do that every day. So it's interactive, it's data-driven, and it's personalized, <coughs> because everybody's recommendation is different. Now, in terms of the detailed algorithm, we have a poster outside, so afterwards you can you know, come to the poster. So here is, for example, the main screen of the uh, glucose guide. You can see we, you can input your glucose level, your diet, exercise, and blood pressure. These, again, the, the collaborative work with Dr. Pachola. And I just want to show you one screen, that is the food input. Okay. We have a data set of 60,000 food, which you can search by keywords or by voice, the food. And not only that, we also use data analytics or machine learning to classify these 60,000 food to be which one is more healthier or less healthy to eat. It is colored. It, it, you, you can see different colors in, to represent you know, how healthy it is, so that patient may not choose that food to begin with if he sees that. Right? So it's more proactive. But I can tell you that um, food input is a difficult aspect of this problem, because it's always hard to input food, right? you can imagine. 
Well, clinical trial, we actually uh, have done a clinical trial with Dr. Pachula and his lab. Very briefly, we have 17 patients. They are either diabetic or uh, pre-diabetic, and they are divided into two groups, and the trial lasts for three months. Evaluation, how do we evaluate the result? Well, I want to tell you one measurement. It's called A1C. A1C is a blood test that you will do in the lab, not at home in the lab. That can tell you the average blood glucose in the past three months. Because again, you see the blood glucose goes up and down, right? And A1C's value is that when it's less than 6%, you're normal. Between 6 to 6.4 is pre diabetic and greater than 6.5 is diabetic. So next time when you go to a health checkup, ask Dr. to put A1C. And gluc glucogyze user will achieve this result. Okay? The mean reduction on A1C is 0.38%. And if glucogyze user adhere our recommendation, their reduction will, will reach 1.23%. Now look at this number comparing to these ranges. You will see that these reductions will make an early diabetic patient to be pre-diabetic, pre-diabetic to be normal, or even directly from early diabetic to be normal, because these numbers actually clearly shows that. And this is achieved using glucogyze for three months and with lifestyle change only, which means that the patient takes whatever medicine he's taking, not changing the medicine. Right? So because of that, I think glucogyze could be adopted by many people because we don't deal with medicine. Okay, so some current and future work. Well, I want to mention two important um, ideas, I think ingenious ideas, that we want to improve Brookhead further. Um, please keep these ideas in this room. <laughs> well, first of all, I mentioned that it is very difficult to input food and, and readings, right, like glucose does, to connect all these devices. What can we do better to make it easier for people? Well, every cell phone has a camera. Right? Can't we just Take a picture of the plate of the food you are eating, and then maybe then through data analytics, it will say, gee, that looks like the, you know, the, the, the components of the food that you have. Can we take a picture of the, of the meter, and they say, that must be that reading. So you, don't, so you can use any meters. You don't have to have Bluetooth pairing, which is still complicated for, for a normal person. But to do that, I can tell you, it's a very challenging research problem. Okay? Nobody can do that, <coughs> not even Google. Okay. So, deep learning is a, re, is, a, is a very recent new research area and that we are working on that might be able to solve this problem. Um, I, have a post, I have a PhD student who have a postdoc, who have a poster outside about deep learning. Another important idea, I think, is about how to make that even more visual, more direct to people, recommendation. Remember, early on the recommendation I sent as a text. Can we make that more direct, more impact, more friendly, more user friendly? Well, we are thinking to implement these plated recommendations. So when, when, when people drag, put food into their plate as a meal, we will divide the plate into several, several portions, and one of them, for example, is carbohydrate. So to make the patient eat less carbohydrate, we will just push a new plate over with a smaller portion on the carbohydrate. So then you will see that the carbohydrate will be over the normal range. And the color is used to represent how good the carbohydrate is. So we can use color to represent how good each portion of the food is. And also we can use the volume as a visual plate. And we automatically adjust those plates as a hidden recommendation. And that's, that would probably be much better than text recommendation. So these are the things that we have been thinking and we're working on and hopefully we'll make Google Guide better. So to summarize, um, again, uh, data mining, machine learning, or data analytics these days um, um, has been my research for over 20 years. And I want to give you two high-level messages I have for working in this area for more than 20 years. The first one is that more data may be better than smart software or algorithms. Especially these days when we have a lot of data, we can easily collect data, we want to get values from this data to improve people's life. The second is that we think killer applications driven research is more impactful than research driven applications, whatever it is. And I think glucoguide is this kind of killer applications. 
but it also needs research. It also needs to solve all these problems in order to make it better. Thank you. Okay, Charles, we have time for one quick question. Okay, one not so quick question. <laughs> okay, well, we'll end on. You're going to let him get away with that comment about data versus software, but we might hear different <laughs> <laughs> about some of the talks that follow, so we'll say thanks, Charles.